Hi, we are here at the McAllister Family Cemetery right near uh, Fort Hunter. Uh, these were the individuals that actually owned Fort Hunter. They bought it uh, <coughs> after the French and Indian War. So quite a bit of, bit of history here. The Dickinson McAllister, third son of James and Amanda G. McAllister, born 1855 at Fort Hunter, in July, died in 1914. I think that's a Joseph McAllister. <coughs> I can't quite make the name out there. This is uh, Mary C. McAllister. Amanda C. who's the mother. Right, a number of these were children. And this is the much older part of the cemetery. <coughs> Not a real big cemetery, but uh, this is one of those, once again, it's a family plot. It's always intriguing coming to these places. Oh, pretty trees there, right? The... You're one veteran or two veterans there. But this family, they owned it through until the, uh, one lady donated it to uh, Dolphin County. There's John McAllister, born 1790, died 1866. I had to look at some of the names. Uh, there's a couple you can. Looks like you can read them maybe a little better. <coughs> Excuse me. I just, uh, so the camera decided to cut off out of nowhere again. Uh, this is right here at McAllister. Uh, it's, you go back and you can make a left uh, as you're going towards uh, Fort Hunter at the Centennial Barn. And that will uh, take you back. There's a composting facility back here. The McAllister graveyard is right here at uh, the composting facility. It's sort of in the back here. Uh, the composting facility is out through here and then you'll see a big uh, cell tower right over there. <coughs> it's right over here. It's this big stone wall that's sort of right there. So really quite cool. I really didn't do a whole lot of research on this. Uh, it just sort of decided hey I'm gonna come out here and check this out because I wanted to do this country roads take me home for 443 and uh, go from there but uh so I'm gonna with that we're gonna go and see if we can find the uh, slave cemetery as well which I think that one's like, quite a bit harder to find because uh, it really hasn't been preserved very well so all right thanks everybody all right, so in this video, I am going to actually concentrate primarily on Archibald McAllister, who was the individual who wound up buying the Fort Hunter property. I've also seen that he rented quite a bit of the land from a Chambers. Um, which one is true, I'm not really sure, but he was, in essence, the founder of the McAllister family sort of dynasty. <coughs> 
His uh, father's uh, name was Cur- he was Colonel Richard McAllister. He was actually the founder of Hanover, Pennsylvania. So Captain Archibald McAllister was actually born in Hanover in 1756. He died in 1831. Uh, <coughs> Both of them actually served in the Revolutionary War. His father was a colonel in the Revolutionary Army. He was a captain. He served uh, under George Washington in the 8th Pennsylvania Regiment. He served at Germantown and Monmouth. I believe he wound up resigning his commission in 1777. Uh, but he did was awarded by George Washington himself for gallantry in the Battle of Monmouth, or Monmouth, uh, a pair of silver-mounted uh, pistols, and that was, once again, directly by George Washington. And once again, the Fort Hunter property, whether he bought that, which I'm assuming he bought most of it because he built that mansion then over where the original Fort Hunter had been. <coughs> he also built the uh, Centennial Barn, uh, the tavern, stables, a number of the buildings there. Uh, he actually made it a self-sufficient frontier village. Uh, it had a grist and a sawmill, a country store, a blacksmith shop, a school. Uh, it had artisan shops. That tavern I had talked about, which was a really, really beautiful building. <coughs> Excuse me. And a distillery that was quite successful. The Pennsylvania Canal also was built, and they wound out having a stop there, and it operated quite well as a trading post uh they were able to move barges through there and a number of other type of boats along the susquehanna unfortunately as we talked about before this property also owned slaves uh, about 20 of them of african descent and they operated the house the distillery the tavern uh, and they made all kinds of different products now there is like we talked about earlier uh, we visited the McAllister Cemetery earlier in this video. There is also an African-American cemetery that used to be on the old Port Hunter property, but over time that property got sold. It's now private land. I did try to find that cemetery, but with the way my foot is, it's just unfortunately, it's something that'd be too hard for me to get to at this stage. And there's a lot of uncertainty of where it exactly is located. Where the McAllister Cemetery is, I believe it's right across the train tracks, back in the woods. It's as you can see in the pictures, it's not very well maintained. There are about 12 markers. and Find a Grave, it talks about that there's about 12 markers there. I'm assuming there's quite a bit more because they had slaves there, I think, through to 1831 when he passed away um, from when he bought it. So it was almost 60 years that there were people there, and a lot of them got buried there. Now, there were some that escaped, like when we read that sign on the Fort Hunter video, the one lady was put up for sale and she actually escaped. So I'm assuming there probably were others as well, but it's unfortunately, this is a part of our history that these type of places that should be remembered, unfortunately, do get forgotten and not maintained. So with that, I will thank you. This cemetery is also known as the Craig Cemetery. And uh, with that, I will end the video and I will say once again, thank you and we will see you all about town.